What exactly is hard to borrow when it comes to stocks? Hard to borrow stocks are stocks that are heavily shorted to begin with or already have a lot of their float locked up, whether it's on the insider right after an IPO, things that will really limit the available float of the stock such that your broker can't locate shares for you to short. Part of the reason I'm bringing this up is Beyond Meat is hard to borrow right now. Beyond Meat will cost you 131% interest right now for you to borrow Beyond Meat shares to short. I just want all of the money. Today I want to talk about something pretty important that a lot of people kind of ignore when it comes to stocks. I sometimes get questions, oh, why aren't you shorting this? Or why aren't you shorting that? Why aren't you doing this? Truth is beyond the fact that there's probably a million different ways to make money or lose money in the stock market, sometimes your hands are tied when it comes to shorting stocks. Key thing I kind of want to talk about today is hard to borrow and hard to borrow stocks as well as fees you pay when you go to short sell these stocks. These are things I think a lot of uh, newbies don't realize and a lot of intermediate traders oftentimes forget. When you go to short a stock, there's actually a process involved with shorting that stock. And a lot of people forget about this. Basically, when you're shorting the stock, the process is you are borrowing shares of that stock from someone who already owns that stock. And you're going ahead and the moment you borrow, you go ahead and you sell the stock. So you're taking a negative position on stock that you don't actually own. Now, this is fine when um, you know that stock doesn't change hands very often or there's a very high float and the ability for your broker to find an available counterparty to lend you the stock is readily available. Keep in mind, it's not like you're asking your dad, hey dad, can I borrow 100 shares of Beyond Meat so I can go ahead and short it. No, um, your chances are your dad doesn't own Beyond Meat. And so you're going to your broker, your broker locates shares for you to borrow and you go ahead and you immediately sell them. In the electronic day and era, we just hit the short button and everything kind of just automatically works. But this is kind of what happens on the backside of things. So this kind of sucks because I just went into my brokerage account and it's Sunday that I'm recording this video and I just realized that they're not going to be updating the cost to borrow these shares on Sunday. Uh, I was going to show you guys exactly how much it'll cost me to borrow some shares. It's more or less real time that they calculate on a yearly basis what is the rate. And you pay that out compounded daily, typically. Great website to kind of explain to you uh, the cost of short selling stock. And it gives you two examples, right? The first one is uh, an easy to borrow stock. Remember, this is a stock available in many pensions and a lot of different portfolios, easily viable for a lot of people to have. So the broker has no problem in locating shares uh, to borrow so that you can short the stock. In this case, it's Apple. Let's run down this scenario. You short sell 100 shares of Apple. This is how much you're paying on an APR basis on a yearly basis to short sell Apple. Doesn't really cost you much at all. And that's because Apple has so many shares outstanding, so many shares with it, uh, available within the overall float that change hands in the market, that locating shares is not a big deal. 0.25% over the course of a year is not a really big amount that you'd have to pay. Kind of goes over the price that you're paying the interest on. So this is about $150. So this is uh, the fee rate that you're actually going to be paying on the 150. This is uh, pretty much informative. Don't worry about this borrow fee too much. This is the cash amount that will be charged to borrow Apple for that day. What's very interesting is, uh, and it's important to keep in mind, what ends up happening is, let's think about this for a second. You're borrowing shares of Apple. Let's assume it's still at 150, which it's not, but let's assume for this example, it's at 150. You're borrowing shares from someone who owns Apple, uh, the broker arranges that for you, and you go ahead and sell it. So you've sold shares of Apple, you don't own these shares. So there's a cash balance that sits in your account. Interactive brokers will pay you a certain interest rate for shorting stock or for cash balances in general. And in this case, and at this point of time where this example was written, kind of gives you the benchmark rate or um, you know it could be a rebate rate or something along those lines 
um, but it'll tell you what your benchmark rate is at this point in time. Now, this is based on having $5 million available to you. Most of my audience is not going to have that available to them, but they'll actually uh, pay you this interest rate. So in the case of Apple, you are actually netting a 0.378% APR on an annual basis for shorting Apple. You'll make 15 cents per day just on interest. Obviously, uh, if you shorted Apple at $150 back in 2017, you're gonna be hating your life right now because Apple's well over $230 a share at this present time. Uh, you know, you can at least subtract this 15 cent a day interest that uh, you would have gotten from shorting Apple. So in the case of easy to borrow shares, uh, sometimes you can actually make money based on the interest paid out to you. So when does this become a problem? Well, when a stock is hard to borrow. So what happens when a stock is hard to borrow? This is the fee rate you're paying. So this was Snap back in 2017. This was the price of Snap. And this was the fee rate for Snap. So over the course of the year, you're actually paying you know, $9. Even though the price of Snap is $18, you're paying $9 in interest just to borrow Snap shares for you to essentially short the stock. If Snap goes down, it needs to go down a lot and it needs to go down fairly quick for you to actually make a profit because by the end of the year, you're gonna be paying $9 in interest. Now the fee rate does change as more shares become available on the float. It's possible Snap was in a lockup period, meaning the insiders owned a lot of Snap and a lot of the shares weren't floating within the market at this point in time, which is why the fee rate tends to be higher. There could be other causes as well but uh, that's just the easiest one I can think of off the top of my head. And in this case, you borrow Snap at 50% interest rate, you better hope that thing goes down. Otherwise, you're gonna be in some, some deep shit. So it's $13.96, but you know, a year ago, it had hit $6.34. Seems like a lot of money if you uh, decided to short it even two years back. Uh, just keep in mind, there was a period of time where uh, borrowing these shares would have cost you uh, an arm and a leg. It's possible that this snapshot was taken, uh, said June 2017. Yeah, so right around here, uh, ballpark, uh, where you would have shorted it, but you would have been paying probably a lot of interest. I'm guessing the price went down a lot uh, at some point around here because the people who were on the inside of Snap uh, got a chance to offload their positions and basically turn their ownership of Snap shares into cash. So they got out of the shares and, um, you know, Snap is no longer expensive to borrow anymore, but the price has gone down as insiders start liquidating. You can see how many shortable shares there are here and you can see how many shortable shares there are of Apple. 202 million of a, a stock that's priced much higher versus 159,000 of a stock that's priced only at $18 a share. So it kind of really opens your eyes of what's really behind short selling and how you need to make money fairly quickly to take advantage of this cost to borrow. I uh, have some covered calls on Beyond Meat when the price fell to about like 105. I have some put options as well. The reason I think Beyond Meat can potentially go down even further is because it, this week insiders are finally able to sell. Now, there are two things that are gonna happen. Uh, insiders are gonna sell, and if there's not enough demand on the other side for Beyond Meat stock, the price of Beyond Meat stock is going to fall. Most likely it is gonna fall this week, um, but you can't really take advantage of it easily, you know, because the shares are very hard to borrow and very expensive to borrow without, you know, put options. Since I can't pull up the real time data of how much it will cost me to borrow shares right now, this article that was written on August 1st, 2019, you can kind of see that the bears are actually uh, spending more than 100% on Beyond Meat shares, just to borrow Beyond Meat shares. The offer rates, this is the current short interest at this point in time. A lot of that's gonna change this week. It's 10 27, 2019. I hope to have this video edited and out before um, Wednesday of this week. After that point in time, you're gonna actually see that the cost uh, to 
short Beyond Meat should go down as more shares become available. A lot of times I know you guys have these thoughts, hey, it's a short bet to short this or it's a short bet to do this. A, nothing's a short bet. B, if you're wrong, you're going to get your face torn off because you're going to be paying a, an ass load of interest. You know, I know you guys saw a video of me doing it, but that was me kind of uh, wanting to be an asshole on camera. I recently did a video where I tried to short Tesla stock when it hit $302 and change. And uh, my broker rejected uh, the order saying they could not borrow the shares for me to short Tesla. Last time I tried to short it with a small amount like 20 and my broker like literally rejected oh it didn't reject it this time yeah see shares are not currently available to short which kind of worked out in some ways because uh, tesla kept continuing to climb higher and higher but um it really kind of goes to show you that sometimes uh when you go to short a stock you're shit out of luck because your broker just can't uh, locate your shares for you to short. So uh, that's it for me. I hope you guys enjoy this talk and uh, I'll catch you guys all soon.